this morning the scripture that we're getting ready to read. You heard a little bit about this story Wednesday night and uh, it went right along with my studies and I found it uh, uh, to be uh, uh, worthy to be used again. The Bible says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that His hour was come, that He should depart out of this world into the Father. Having loved His own which were in the world, He loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put it to the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. You may be seated. Now, Thomas was preaching a little bit different lines uh, on Wednesday night, but uh, as I was, I was already studying, turn this thing down one notch back here. As I was studying uh, the the this week throughout the scriptures, I was reading, I was in Proverbs with different things. And man, I'll tell you uh, what Brother John said right before uh, we we started the worship service in Sunday school. Uh, man, he couldn't have nailed it on the head any better. And, and the thoughts that I've had. But how many, how many like payday in here? Y'all like payday, don't you? Man, I'll tell you that... Uh, that's the only reason most of us, uh, I don't know about y'all, but that's the only reason I go to work is for payday, ain't it? I mean, without payday, I mean, I tell you, I, there's some Fridays where that I get, I get, uh, I get, I get, I like payday Friday when I get off work early and the sun's shining and it's warm. Man, it don't get no better than that. That's when you just love the life. And that happens about once a year. And whenever it happens that I get off early on Friday, on payday Friday, and it's sunny, and I'm getting off work early, and I'll just I'll be driving home just cherishing the moment because I'm like, man, this don't come along too often, you know? But I like payday. But why do we like payday for? Because it does what? It puts into our banks money, right? Is it not? There's a deposit that's made into our bank accounts, amen, that we now know what once was empty now is a little bit full again, amen. We know that, that, that it's a little bit of that we, we can go and be secure, but I thought about when Thomas was reading this other night, I've been studying on some things, and I just want to uh, touch basis on the story that he read, and in the second scripture it said, now the supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart, of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus. And I thought about some things, uh, some deposits that's being made in our life by the devil. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I think about the things that the devil comes by our banks and deposits yeah. into our life and puts into our minds and puts into our soul. And I, I've been thinking on this thought all week and I'm going to tell you that, man, Throughout all this flu season, it's easy throughout everybody having the flu and this sickness that's going around, it's easy to get off track of, of a loose faith in what God wants us to do, is it not? Amen. It's right. easy to doubt God and His Word and what it says. And I'll be the first one to admit, I, I, ne I never went to the doctor, but I'm going to tell you right now, I was in there raiding the pill cabinet and, and, and trying to, to take something just to be able to breathe and, and different things. But you know, uh, it, it comes down to a point in the lesson tonight, or today, that uh, the message that I want to use for a thought that doubt is a deposit of the devil. Amen. Doubt is a deposit of the devil. And throughout a lot of these things, I, I took a, an overview of my life and, and the, the doubt that, that God has, has put in me about some things in certain areas that, that I've doubted God on and that I've lost faith on and I've lost the way on. And you know, it's no doubt in my mind that God can't, has not been using this church and been the miraculous things has been happening. But, but you know, when it came down to a cough or a headache, I didn't even have enough faith to rebuke a cough or a headache. Amen. And why? Because the devil puts doubt into our minds and makes a deposit. Amen. amen. And he comes by and he says, you know what? He says that I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. Just like he did Judas, the Bible said that the devil now putting into Judas's heart the things that he was going to do to Jesus. Adam and Eve in the garden. Amen. The Bible said that the serpent came and beguiled Eve, amen. He swung by and made a deposit in the Garden of Eden, amen, which brought forth sin. Why? Because that's what he does. He puts deposits in our lives every week, amen. He comes by, amen, and even though God's been putting things in there also, the devil comes by and slips a little bit of unsurety in your mind, and he slips a little bit of 
to doubt your mind. There was a story in the Bible, amen, and, and I'm going to get there. There's a story in the Bible to a point. I was talking to God, not to you. God put two things on my mind at once. But, uh, there was a story in the Bible, amen, about a man that had brought his child down to the disciples. And the disciples, they said, they said, we need you to heal him because everywhere I take him, he foams at the mouth, he tears things up, he, he kicks and screams and real loud and obnoxious and he's got an issue and we want to hit and we want you to heal him. Well, the disciples tried to heal this man, this boy, and they could not. Amen. They tried their very best. Amen. And so what happened during all this process, the scribes came along and they started looking and they started convert and saying, what are you trying to do here with this boy? And they, and they, we're trying to cast him out, but we, it's not happening. And, and so here comes Jesus down along the way. Jesus comes down and said, why are you questioning my disciples for talking to the scribes? He said, why are you questioning my people for what's going on here? He's seen all these multitude of people standing around. Amen. And, and this man said, my son is, is very sick and I brought him to your disciples. And he said that, hey, they couldn't cast this devil out. And, and Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples and said, now faith and perverse generation. Amen. How long must I suffer to be with you? Amen. And why could they not cast him out? The disciples came to Jesus later and said, why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus said, because of your unbelief, because you lack in prayer, because you lack in fasting, because this time come not but by prayer and fasting. And you didn't have belief because you doubted, amen, that God could do anything with him because of his condition, because you looked upon his condition, amen, and you didn't look upon God. God, amen, but you seen a man that needed serious medical attention, serious help, and you didn't think that you could do anything for him. Amen. You doubt it in your heart. Yeah. And that's why you couldn't heal him. Amen. It's because of that. <coughs> now, as I thought about what the disciples went through there, and they, they started, they had doubted God. He goes back to where we preached last week. That Peter, the Bible said when Peter fell in the water after he walked on the water, Jesus reached out and picked him up. But what was the first thing that he asked him? Why, why didn't thou doubt? He said, why did you doubt? Doubt, amen, is a serious disease. Amen. Understand that today. Doubt is a disease in a Christian's life. It is like cancer to a physical body. Doubt, amen, in a Christian's life is like carbon monoxide to your lungs. Doubt will kill you. Doubt will take you down. Doubt that would destroy you. Why? Because it takes your faith off of God. Amen. And it, it, it puts God powerless. And there's a quote that says, if you doubt your power that's been given to you, then you give the power to your doubt. Amen. And you've got to know today that when you, you've got to have faith in God, all of us have got to have faith in God that we believe the Scriptures, at least we say we believe the Scriptures, that what? With God all things are possible. And with God, no Nothing is impossible. Work with who uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. That's right. But the problem, the problem with today, and this is where I'm going to settle down and set up camp for a minute. Yeah. The problem today is, it's not that God can't do things, and the problem's not that God's not living in you. And the problem's not that you're 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 doubting God. The problem is you don't believe in yourself. Amen. That's the problem. You don't believe in yourself to allow God to work through you. Yeah, come on. That's the problem. See, the disciples did not believe that they obtained what it took to heal that young man. Jesus called seven. He said, Unto you I'll give power to to have to transform the serpents and nobody's going to do you any harm and I assure you of these things that you have the power to heal the sick to cast out devils to do all these things the seventy went out they came back and they said you know what they said we seen the devils and they were subject unto us and we casted them out yeah. and Jesus said I seen heaven I seen Satan fall from heaven he said, I, I'll give you the power to turn upon servants, the devil's subject to you, all these. He said, but wheresoever you in that, rejoice not. He said, but rather rejoice that your name's been written in heaven. But listen, the main thing was that they did it. Why did they do it? 
because they believed in their self, amen, that God was going to be there and God give them that authority and they had no doubt about what God had told them that promised them. They had no doubt and they went out there and the devils were subject unto them. Why? Because they didn't doubt in their hearts. That's right. You cannot amen. doubt. Doubt is a deposit from the devil. Doubt, the main reason is 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by what faith? and did not by sight. Most of us don't believe in ourselves because we walk by sight and not by faith. Woo! Think about that. We walk by sight and not by faith. We go by what we see. We go by what worldly things are. Listen to me tonight. Here today, if you if you walk through this world looking at what worldly things are possible, let me tell you something. Amen. I'm telling you, if you need money, amen, don't be looking at what worldly things you can do, but be looking on what godly things he can do through you. Amen. And I had a boy call me uh, a couple weeks ago and he 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 was stuck and living in a homeless shelter and doing things, blah, blah, blah. But he wanted some money. And he wanted two hundred dollars. And he'd been in this homeless shelter for four days. And he needed two hundred dollars for a bus ticket. And I said, you know what? I said, I can make two hundred dollars in two days if I'd go out here and scrape leaves or take out trash or paint a barn. Amen. But you're stuck in that homeless shelter because you choose to be stuck in that homeless shelter because you don't believe in yourself. Amen. And you don't want to go out and get a job and do work. Amen. But I thought about how in our life that we doubt God. And through doubting ourselves, we doubt God. And then we doubt ourselves, amen, and that keeps us from seeing God work in our life. What are you talking about? Jesus said this, that if thou had the faith as a grain, y'all know how big it is? That's literal than a mustard seed. It's inside that thing. It's, it's probably that, that big. Jesus said, if thou had the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, that you can say, be thou to this mountain removed, and it shall be cast into the sea. Amen. Yeah. Without doubt. But listen to this. Sometimes you have to rely on God. But sometimes you need to rely on God in you. Amen. That's right. Think about it. Sometimes when we get into problems, we run to God and we want to we get to that mountain and we get to that thing in our life and we pray to God, God, you've got to take care of this for me. No. God did this. He wants you to use him in you to take care of that. He said for you to be saying to that mountain. He didn't say call upon me to cast it out. He said if you have faith as the size of a grain of mustard seed, you say unto this mountain, be thou removed. And it will be cast into the sea. He, you've got to trust yourself. If you'll get behind me this morning, I'll preach to you this morning. Let me tell you something. You've got to trust in yourself because some things God leaves up to you. Amen. Amen. But people sit around and line around and want God to do everything for them. That's right. yeah. You want God to be your caddy and your chef and your chauffeur and all these things. And listen, you want to lay all over, but I'll tell you that God will fight that battle for you, but He will use you to fight that battle. And He will use you to glorify His name. And He will use you to prove to the world. Listen to me. It's your battle. God will fight it for you. But you've got to believe in yourself that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And with God, nothing's impossible today. When we doubt it. And most Bless people walk around right here that can't even rebuke a headache. Amen. Come on. That's right, brother. Come on. Yeah. Most people walk around that can't even re rebuke the devil out of their homes. Amen. Come on. Why? Because they sit back and they want God to do it. But God has to use you. That's right. He said, you say unto that mountain. You must have faith. Faith in what? Faith in that He lives in me. And the greater is in me that's in the world. God wants to use you. You've got to believe in yourself. Amen. You can't let the devil put doubt in your mind and say, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Why? Because God did it for you already. Amen. You just got to carry it out. Oh, uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday. We was talking about how that he thought that he felt weak and that he felt that, that he was a doormat. And I'll tell you today that just because you're a Christian don't mean that you're a doormat. Amen. Amen. Right. It means that you are to stand firm. 
Yeah. When your enemies rise up against you. Not, not humble yourself down and let people trump on you Amen. and walk on you. Amen. And do all those things to That's you. Right. But it's, it's mean that you are to stand firm. And he said, well, I don't feel tough because I, whenever they say stuff to me, I just sit there and take it. And I told him, I said, listen, a reaction or no reaction is a reaction. Amen. Amen. I understand that today. That no, but when when that enemy can entice you to fight and you fight, guess who won? That enemy did because he made you change the course. He made you give up what you said you was going to. He made you react in a different way. He made you, amen, submit to him and what he wanted for you. In the same way the devil does. He'll put doubt in your minds. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's right. He'll put doubt in your mind. Amen. He'll put doubt in your mind. And before you know it, He's done changed you. Amen. That's right. He's changed you. That's right. Why? Because you didn't believe. Why? Because the Bible said that the, uh, there was a good man that went out into his ground and plowed it up and sowed seeds. But while he slept, the enemy came. Amen. And what did he do? He sowed tares among the wheat. He made a deposit. Amen. He made a deposit. Did he not? The devil will make deposits in your life. That's right. And even though they look good, I had somebody one day was talking to me, talking about the lottery and different things like that. He said, "Man, if I won that right there, I'd, I'd build you a church." I said, well, I said, we'd be praying about that, I guess. <laughs> Amen. That's right. But why? Why? Because I don't want no deposit from the devil. I don't want no deposit. Amen. From the devil in my life. But the devil comes by my window every day. And he wants to make a deposit. And I have to tell him, hey, this window is closed. This window, this bank has done been filled. Done been filled with what? It's full of the Holy Ghost. There ain't no room for your dirty money in here. Amen. Why? Because I don't need your deposit. Amen. But now the devil puts into your heart every day the things that you do wrong against God's will. Amen. He puts into your heart. Listen. Benjamin Franklin, y'all know who he is? I wrote something down for him. Yeah, that's all right. Benjamin Franklin said, when in doubt, don't. Amen. I like that. When in doubt, don't. And I thought, man, that's an awesome thing there. Because why? Because doubt is a deposit from the devil. God don't give you doubt. Amen. God don't tell you you can't do things. But I'm going to tell you this morning, amen, that all things are possible through God. And we, if you want, amen, say, well, preach, you believe I, you believe that I can rebuke sickness? Absolutely, I believe you can rebuke sickness. I believe you can rebuke financial problems. I believe you can rebuke, rebuke Satan. I believe you can rebuke evil people. I believe you can rebuke the devil. I believe you can control your life and overcome sin and that the power of God can shine through you. Amen. And that God give you the authority, amen, by the word of God to do those things because listen, he said the things that I do, the ones that believe on me, the greater than these shall they do because I go to be with the Father. And I believe that God gave you authority to stand up for yourself. God gave you authority to take control of your life. God gave you authority to rebuke Satan. God gave you authority to believe and not doubt. God gave you the very right to do the right thing. He gave you the right, amen, to stand up, amen, and to rebuke the deposit of the devil. You don't have to put up with the things of this world. You don't have to. I believe God gave you authority and power. But we look upon our life, we look upon our lives, and we think, well, I'm just helpless. I'm just worthless. I'm just empty. I'm powerless. I can't do anything without God. And I'll tell you, now let me tell you today, that you can't do anything without God. But God ain't going to do everything for you. Amen. God's not going to do everything. We want our bed made and our cake and all that. And we want to have our cake and eat it too and all these things. We want to, we want to go to, to the place of our problems and it all be swept clean. And there be no controversy and there be no battle. And there be no fight and there be no percussions and there be no consequences. We want to go down to the battlefield. We want to set up the victory flag and walk off. Amen. And let God fight our battles and trust in us all. No. God sometimes will call you. Amen. 
amen, to stand up to that mountain and to call out to that mountain, to show your sign of faith and to say, listen, mountain, I claim this day victory in the Lord Jesus. You might be bigger than me, but I have authority through the Word that I can cast you into the sea and you become submissive, submissive to me. Amen. Did you know that the devil will be submissive to you in your life? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Preachers, a lot of times, church people, because of their lifestyle and that they can't see the power of God move, they'll stand there and they'll say, well, now the devil's just running rapid and he's got to deal with life sometimes. No. No. I ain't got to deal with him. Nowhere in the Bible does it say I have to deal with the devil. That's right. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that I'm supposed to submit to the deposit that he puts in my life. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell me that he is going to control me. Amen. Think about it. I have been given authority. Amen. Come on. That's right, brother. I've been given authority. Why? Because the Word says that I have authority. Did you know I go into conversations with people and I can control them? <coughs> Why? Because I have authority. Amen. Yes. I told you. I told you. You better be ready to eat this morning. This ain't baby stuff. I love you looking at me like I don't flip my wig. <laughs> it's, it's past Noah's Ark time now. Amen. 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 It's past, Amen, Jonah, in the well time now. It's time to get into some meat and understand that God give us authority. Amen. He give us power. He give us glory. He give us honor. And sometimes He wants you to handle the situation. Amen. Did you know that some situations in pastor? People say, well, God put you there to be a representative of Him, and that's true. But God chose me to make godly decisions based on what He taught me in the Word. I don't go to God on every little knick-knack thing and wonder if we should buy a belt for the vacuum cleaner and go to some holy grail and pray on a cloud whether or not I should spend $15 on a belt for the vacuum cleaner. Nor do I go to God, amen, when I decide, amen, if we should have a, 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 a new new uh, a vacuum or a new thing in the church or, or something here or, you know, something that edifies the church and helps us worship, you know, like a projector. I don't go to God and ask Him, God, can I go buy a projector so that we can play movies to help the church and help our Christmas plays and edify. No, some decisions He trusts me with. Amen. That's right. Because he laid it in the Word of God and he said, listen, I called you to be a leader. You don't have to aggravate me over every little decision. All you have to do is go to the Word. Amen. I've done told you the answer there and if it says it's okay in the Word, guess what? I'm going to tell you it's okay. Leave me alone. Amen. True or not? Amen. That's all I'd get done was praying if I had to go to God with every little decision. But God... Trust me. To, now, when I make a wrong decision out of the Word of God, that's right. Come on. Then I get chastised for. Amen. But God trusts you to make decisions in your life based on the Word. You don't have listen to me. You don't have to run to God with every little problem. God trusts you to get into the Word and find it for yourself. Amen. You have to believe in yourself. God trusts you to make decisions in your life. But when you make them contrary to what the Word of God says, that's when destruction comes. But God trusts you. He trusts you in certain areas of your life to do the right thing. He trusts you. And when it comes down to doubt, guess what? He trusts you to do the right thing. Amen. He trusts you to do the right thing. Now, what I want to talk to you for just a second before I close is that God calls us and He wants to use us and He lives inside of us. Amen. And we walk in His Spirit all day and we are supposed to study and we're supposed to pray. 
But when the devil puts doubt in our minds, and we come up to that mountain, and we come up to that, that whatever problem, that giant in your life, whatever it may be, when we come up to that in our life, and we look upon that giant, we say, that's too big. He's too strong. The mountain's too high. It's too rocky. You absolutely just doubt it. If the Lord is right. And God, the church world today can see so many more people saved if we would quit doubt. Amen. Doubt is a serious disease. Right. Doubt is a disease. And it's the disease that's killing the church. And I say to you today that doubt is a deposit from the devil. And that God, when you get to that mountain, don't look around for God to be miraculously somewhere. Just because Abraham took his son Isaac off him up, God made the way for their ram to be there, but He didn't cut the ram up and offer it up as sacrifice. No, Abraham had to go get the ram and offer it up. Amen. So when you get to the things in your life to where you start, you see that are too big for you to handle, what you need to be praying is not God remove this from my life, but God help me fight this back. God use me. Amen. Give me the power and the authority to cast this into the sea. To say, remove me, remove from my life. Why? Because believe it or not today, you're in control of your life. Amen. Amen. That's right. You're Amen. in control of it. You have authority over what happens in your life. Amen. Say, so, well, preacher, there's situations that come at me that I don't have no control of. Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. You have authority and power to deal with it or you can run from it. And when you deal with it, you get in there and you, you do it by the authority and the power of the gospel. Amen. I've talked to people that have been full of evil before. The devil speaking through their lips. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Bless you, man. I'm telling you. No, I don't tell everybody this stuff. But I, I talk to people that are full of evil. And did you know that when I start talking to them, I can see the evil in them and that God, I pray to God, and by the authority that God's given me, I control that demon that's in that person. Yeah, bless him. And that demon that's in that person, I can take somebody that is buck wild and I can calm them down and have them saddled and muzzled. And God will have them in authority and in check. Amen. Why? Because God uses us yeah. in those ways. God uses us in those ways. Amen. It's not you that's doing them. But you must believe Amen. that that's God right. is in you. That right there is it. Amen. Amen. You must believe that God is in you. It's not that I walk around saying everybody's subject to me. No, everybody, everybody is subject to me. Why? Because God lives in me. Amen. That's right. God lives in me. And God, if God lives in me, it's just like the ship that Jesus was down there sleeping. The, 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 the people got, the disciples got fearful. They got scared. They went down there and woke him up. He came up there. He said, Do you think I was going to let something happen to this ship? I'm on it. Amen. Do you think God's going to let anything happen to you? Why? Because he lives in there. Amen. That's right. It's because He dwells in you that you have the authority and the power and the ability, amen, to call out the devil. God ain't going to let nothing happen to you. Why? Because He lives in you. He lives in you. Listen to me. You must believe in yourself. Amen. And when I say in yourself, I don't mean in yourself. I mean in you as a whole that God's in there. Yeah. And with God, not by God. It's not by God all things are possible. But it's what? It's with Him. With Him and you and you and Him. And y'all, with Him, all things are possible. Doubt 
is something that's killing Christians. Amen. You can live on spiritual coupons if you would like. Come on. Amen. You can live on spiritual welfare and poverty if you want to. You can suck on the bottle all your Christian life. But if you open your eyes and realize that what God can do through you, once God dwells in this vessel, you're unstoppable. Amen. That's right. You're unstoppable. You're untouchable. Understand that today. Yeah. God ain't going to let that ship sink. Why? Because He's in there. You think God's going to look like a failure? Has God ever failed at anything? Has God ever let you down in your bed? Has God ever done you wrong and took you? No, God will always win. Amen. But the devil will come by. He'll say, boy, on Wednesday night, if you just vote no, enough of you just vote no, y'all get rid of that old loud mouth preacher. <laughs> yeah. The devil now put into the heart of Judas. That Judas didn't go to the store and buy that, brother. The devil put it in there. Amen. And the devil's been in every one of your lives this week. Yep. Everybody in here, the devil's been by and he made a deposit. He said, I just put a little bit of that in there. A little bit of that in there. And when we wake up and we realize that the devil's been by and made a deposit, what do we do? Most of us just say, well, I'm either going to choose to handle this problem or ignore it. But many of us don't believe that we have the authority. Jesus said what? Rebuke him in my name. Yeah. And he'll flee. Amen. You have authority and power. Why? It's not because of no great thing that you've done. God don't trust me to make decisions on my own. God didn't call me to come out here and pastor this church, amen, and, and want me to make all the decisions on what I think was right. God wanted me to come down here and say, listen to me. I give you authority. I live in you. I dwell in you. I give you the Bible to be instructed by. I give you the Holy Spirit to tell you that that's right the right thing to do. I give you grace and peace and mercy. I've saved you from your sins. I've set you in a place of leadership. Now lead. Amen. Come on. That's what he said. People say, well, well, how can you make decisions without going to God in prayer? Because He lives in me. Amen. And He tells me. I don't go to the devil every time I do something wrong and ask Him if it's okay if I do it, do I? Do you? Amen. Y'all are lost. Bless him. Y'all are, are out there. Do you go to the devil and ask him if it's okay if you can sin? Yeah. Then why go to God and ask him if it's okay if you can do the right thing? Amen. If it's right, it's right. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. Yeah. Well, the preacher told us not to pray. No, that's not what I say. Quit being spiritual babies and do things on your own. Amen. Say unto that mountain, get out of my way. Get out of my way. So, preacher, how do you... How do people say different things? Say, Man, I'll tell you what, you're tough. No, I'm not tough. The one that lives in me is pretty tough. Amen. I know in myself that everything on this earth is subject unto me. Why? Because He dwells in here. Nature, nature is subject unto the one that lives in me. Listen, animals are subject to the one that lives in me. Amen. Why? How did Noah get those get those animals on the ark? Because they were subject unto the one that was in him. I know that my enemies, the devil, the people that come up against me, guess what? Even though they look like the lie, they're just as an ape. They're subject unto me. Why? Because he lives in here. He lives in here. So this morning, don't doubt yourself and don't doubt your abilities. And don't come to that mountain in your life and be fearful. But stand up and say that doubt was a deposit from the devil. Amen. And I shall not doubt. Why? I can take 
two, I can take three scriptures and I can erase any doubt in any situation at any time. For with God nothing is impossible. For with God all things Amen. And I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. That's right. What did that Philippians 4 13 say? <laughs> what? All. I can do all. What's the first all. two words? I can. I can. Who can? I can. I can. God can. Listen to me. What's it say? I can. I can. Amen. That's right. It didn't say God can. It says I can. God trusts you sometimes to do to do the right thing. Amen. I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> Many of you done thought I lost my marbles this morning. <laughs> Many of you doubting in your minds. Amen. I tell you what, you think I'm crazy? I challenge you. Go home and prove me wrong. Go home and prove me wrong. Go home and prove me wrong. Yeah. You want to know how sure I am? of the message that I preached this morning. I'm sure enough that if I am wrong, I'll resign as pastor. Amen. That's right. That's how sure I am. Yeah. Because the Bible says that God wants to use you. The Bible won't say that God wants to do everything for you. He wants to use you. He wants to use you. I can. I can do all things through Christ. <laughs> Say it to that mountain. The disciples want to know, why couldn't we cast them out? Yeah. Jesus said, because you doubted in yourself. Yeah, that's right. Because you looked at the situation and you doubted. Peter, why did thou doubt? Jesus, because I looked at the waves and the situation and the wind and how big they was and I doubted and I fell. Why do you doubt? Because you look at the situation. I don't have any money. Quit looking at the situation. Because it brings that. When you have a bill and that goose egg in your checking account, it brings that. Because you get the problem, which is the bill, and then you start looking at the situation, which is the big goose egg in your bank account. And you say, you know what? There's no way. Whoop! Now. <laughs> when you go and you look at your physical infirmities in the mirror, you've got the problem. But then when you go and you get your pill bag out of the car that's got 75 pills in it that you take every day, <laughs> you look and you say, there's no way. There's no way God can fix this. There's no way. There's no way. Ain't that right? I'm going to use a quick illustration. Me, y'all going to hate me for this and I'm going to work. I always hear. I thank God for giving people the technology to make modern medicine. Well, I thank God for Moxycontin, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Bless your heart. You thank God for the Moxycontin? <laughs> we thank God. The Bible says that men will be inventors of evil things. <laughs> I believe that the say, well, you don't believe you believe in medicine? Absolutely, I believe in medicine. I believe the things that's going to heal us is contained inside the earth. Amen. Through natural things. Amen. Sometimes you just get sick. People say, did you go when you went to the flu? No. And you know why I didn't go? I was sick for seven days, and guess who? The people that's got the three and four or five hundred doctor bills. Guess how long they was sick for? Seven days. Seven days. Think about that. Huh. You're going to be sick. 
But listen to me. Quit looking at the situation. Amen. If something causes something negative, listen to me. It's a good good explanation. So I've heard people say, you got, you got pancreas problems, you give us a call for this pill on TV, and they'll say, it'll cause you to have bleeding ulcers, and eyelids fall out, and, and your eyeballs will be on fire, and your hair will fall out, and your fingernails, you'll have to peel your fingernails off with pliers because they got cancer, and you'll have diarrhea, and gangrene, and all the other things, but, but your pancreas will be fixed. <laughs> and people will look at that and say, Man, I just thank God for that technology. Let me tell you something. If something's got a side effect, guess who didn't make it? That's right. Come on. You can't tell me that God makes something with a bad side effect. Amen. You can't tell me that God give you something that's going to cause you pain and hurt. So if you have side effects from your medicines, you should really think that they're not of God. Amen. That's not popular today. Bless you. But I'll assure you today that God does not do anything that will cause something negative in your life. He will not do anything that will cause something negative. Whether it's through medicine, job, money, amen, churches, it doesn't matter. Many people go to churches and they're so miserable at their church, they hate their church, their church calls them aggravation and in troubles and sorrows and all these things. And you know what they do? They just keep going there, amen, being miserable and being unhappy and not being able to worship. And they just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. And keep going. And then they come to me and say, hey, pray for the church. I haven't been out there for a long time. Get out of there! Amen. Amen. Come on. Get out. Get out. Time's wasted. Somebody said, well, how do I know it's the right church? When you feel comfortable to worship God, you found the right place. Amen. Not when it's perfect. Amen. You'll never find the perfect church. Yeah, that's, right. that's not what I said. Right. I said when you feel comfortable to worship Him, found the right place. Amen. Come on. Doubt. Doubt is a deposit from the devil. Come on. As they give us a song this morning. I want to know this morning, has the devil been by your house this week? Oh, just a couple of you. Amen. What neighborhood y'all live in? I'm moving over there. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I got self-righteous there for a minute. <laughs> Has the devil been by your house this week? Amen. Your spiritual house, your temple. Has he been by? Amen. Has he slipped something through the doors? Amen. Did he deposit anything in your life? Yep. Did he lay something there for you to doubt? Yep. Amen. Did he try to put something in your heart this week? Absolutely. Huh? Yeah. Did he deposit something this week and say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this right here. Man, they're going to be surprised when they wake up in the morning and find out what kind of havoc I've caused on their life. <laughs> Did you know that you have the power to close the bank? Yes. Let me tell you something. You want to know why the devil comes into our hearts and our minds? Y'all listening? Yes. Come on. It's because once you let Jesus in, you forgot to shut the door. Woo! Amen. Forgot to shut the door. Once Jesus is in there, there ain't no need for nobody else to live in there. Amen. You forgot to shut the door. The majority... Christians today are walking around with their heart in that condition right there. Yeah. Right there. Jesus came in and they never shut the door. Sometimes I like to peek outside in my heart and see what the weather is. <laughs> Guess who tries to sneak in as soon as I crack that door? That's right. Amen. The devil. Amen. The devil does. Sometimes I like to peek my little head outside and just see what the world's up to. Guess who 
slips in a deposit about the time I slip in. Amen. See, when Jesus comes in, we got to lock the door. There ain't no need for nobody else to be in there. Don't doubt this morning. Has the devil been to your house this week? Yes. And if he has, I'm going to ask you to come up here. And I'm going to tell you today that you ought to leave here this morning saying, devil, you are not allowed. You are not allowed by Jesus' name to make a deposit into this bank anymore. Amen. Amen. Why? Because He's subject unto you. Amen. He's not subject unto me only. People call me all the time and say, I want you to pray for me. Why? Pray for yourself. Amen. Come on. The same guy that lives in me is living in you. Amen. If you're lost, I understand that. But if you're a Christian, listen to me. You have the same authority that I have. Amen. Pray Good. for yourself. How many of you have got something in your life that you haven't even prayed over? <laughs> Just because I'm a preacher ain't going to make a prayer be answered any faster. But that's what people think. Yeah. You have believe in yourself that you can touch the very throne that I can. Amen. That you're saved by the same God that I'm saved by. I ain't no better than you are. Amen. I just serve a different purpose in the body of Christ. That's Amen. It. Come on. That's right. That's it. I'm beneath you. Anything you need, I'm there. I'm your servant. I'm beneath. I'm not there. You have the same authority to call on God's name as what I do. Amen. <laughs> Think about it. This morning as they sing, has the devil been by? If you'd like to come pray, I invite you. You should leave here this morning and take control of your life. Take control of your life. How many would like to take control of your life? How many? Would you like to take control of your life? Many people let the devil control their life. Many people let Satan. Whatever they do depends on what Satan's going to do then. How would you like to control your situation? Listen. Leave every care. Does your problems change who you are and what you had to do and what God wants you to do and who He wants you to be? Is the devil running your life? Why don't you take control of it? Why don't you go by the Word of God and take authority back in your life? Kneel at the cross.
building. How many like living on spiritual coupons? Huh? You like living on spiritual coupons or do you want a spiritual payday? You want a spiritual payday? There'll be a payday at the end of life's road. I'll have a crown to wear beyond compare and I'll put on my long white robe. I'll have a payday at the end of life. I ain't living on the devil's crumbs. I ain't going to do it. You can live on the devil's crumbs if you want. But thank God I want God's main course. Thank the Lord this morning. Believe here this morning believing in yourself. Amen. Many of you believe in God and don't believe in yourself. Hey. Y'all are out there. <laughs> Many of you believe in God but don't believe in who? Yourself. Amen. God says you can do all things mm -hmm. through Christ that strengthens you. Man. Good stuff. Amen. Um, we got a baptism here in a little bit. We baptized the three. Uh, three of the people that got saved. Um, well, Jerry got saved a while back, but his boy Cole got saved in the revival. We baptized Stephen, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thomas is not getting the deep, or the shallow end. This <laughs> <laughs> if he does, he's gonna look like Freddy out there in the river. <laughs> I'll make sure he gets wet all over. It's warmer today. You, you can have the uh, shallow end. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, going down for a baptism, something awesome. I told you, couldn't wait to baptize seven souls saved in the revival. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. When you come to church tonight, you better come expect it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's, there's going to be a, a little bit of change in things. Amen. you got a song. Amen. You best get it ready before service starts tonight. Amen. You got a testimony. You better be praying about God to give it to you. Amen. Amen. I'm not. We're not going to. Church lasting three hours is good. Church lasting three hours with foolishness is bad. Amen. Bless your heart. Come on. Amen. Hey, y'all. Go home and go to bed. <laughs> uh, uh, Wednesday night will be our business meeting. We will be having a short church service on Wednesday.